Okay. Um, I would love to do that. Okay. Because we do have a lot of students working on service pro projects related to the classroom and service projects that are outside of the classroom. And we do have AmeriCorps on campus. And we occasionally have this stuff, but I mean, it's kind of challenging to get with that. Right. But um, I would love to see it annotated. We do, um, well, we, it's tied with some scholarships, so we, we have some things that are not yet on the track. Okay. I think it's important, and and uh, and and the conversation on campus may need to be what what do you want to um, put on a transcript that is is transcriptable? Is it service learning that is really academically related? Is it community service too? And and which is sometimes you want to make keep that a little bit narrower and make it really academic instead, and then other community service or activity. Um, I, I look at service to the institution that students provide, which is serving on search committees, and it is um, serving on other committees around campus. If you've got standing committees and students regularly are part of that, um, that, that students should get certificates that say, document, you did this, and thank you from the college. Because I have found more times than not that students forget all of the things that they've done and they don't use them in their resumes and their transcripts and their and their job hunt and they very much should that sets them apart and so yeah i'm glad to meet the person that is championing that here that's wonderful i, I, am, I have such a passion for service and, and many faculty members on campus use it yeah. but we haven't done a lot in the last couple of years to continue to promote it and to, to annotate it and recognize it and i mean Misty's done more service probably than most students on campus by far. Um, but I bet you she hasn't gotten a certificate related to service, <laughs> even, even with the America, she had an America And so did you get an educational award from AmeriCorps for that? Okay, good, good, yeah. So what would you... So yeah, and, and what is it that you think student services could and should do to partner with, with you to strengthen that program? Well, when we first developed the model, we had a, a person over what's now called Campus Living and Learning, and they organized um, what we called Saturdays of Service. And so students that, all, what, what happened is we developed um, a service component with all of the um, LCCC scholarships, yeah, the institutional scholarships. They're supposed to do 10 hours of service for each semester that they receive the scholarship. And so that's outside, it can be inside the classrooms if they have um, faculty who are integrating it into their programs. If, the, if that's not the case, they can do other kinds of service also. And the Saturdays of service helped give them opportunities that were organized and then um, there was reflection time because of course reflection is a very important part of service. Um, and those have, have really um, fallen by the wayside. So I'd like to see something like that reintegrated. I'd like to see um, better documentation and better awareness of service opportunities available on campus or organized on campus for us to go out as groups to do particular projects. Um, we had an effort of that on Earth Day this last year, but it was, it was small, no doubt about that. But there's, I mean, there's lots of possibilities that I would like to see brought back here. I'd like to start alternative spring breaks. I'd like, to, you know, the ideas are endless. There's no doubt about that. Um, yes, the, I mean, that's it. Well, it is. I do it as a faculty member because because I think it's worthwhile and it's, and, and um, so. But do I want to do that as a full-time job? No, because I, I want to be in the classroom. But certainly we could use somebody to bring that to all together. So, agreed. So. Awesome, That's wonderful. Anything else that you have Since you've got the mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I do want to know after hearing your, your bio, um, why should I, why Cheyenne? If you're expecting a new grandchild, 
grandchild. <laughs> if you're, you know, I, I guess I'm assuming that maybe the grandchild is nearby in Montana. Oh, that's a case? Well, then what does it matter, right? <laughs> Fine. Okay. <laughs> That is a good question, and it's a question we always ask people um, coming to Montana, too, because we have better luck recruiting people who are actually have some link to Montana. Um, and, and I don't currently have a link. I, I had relatives who lived in that. My mother grew up in, sometimes in Casper, Wyoming, and I had, we had relatives that lived there until they were a very old age. And then I have uh, relatives that live in Fort Collins. So I do have family around. but. Um, no, that daughter that's going to have the baby is in Pennsylvania. And so, um, actually, this would probably be easier to get to her from here yeah. than it is in Montana, because you just can't get there from here in, in Montana. Um, but my interest is, you know, what I've, what I've learned in my career is that you need to be at a place for five or more years to really accomplish the things you need to if you're going to um, implement and sustain change. And so when I came on board, as you heard, I uh, built the, the office of the, the um, Assistant Dean of Student Services and have developed the leaders in those areas such that they're all really competent and confident people and they know what their job is and they do it very, very well. And they know how to work together better than they did before. And the campus is now used to the idea that they have someone championing student affairs, and, uh, and we've got good policies in place that everyone can follow for student complaints and grievances and student conduct code, and uh, we have put things that were flapping around in our catalog that we said were policies, but they weren't. And so we've looked at that and said, which need to be policies, then let's put them into the policy manual and make sure that we are being clear as a college what are the rules of the game here and how everybody can find them and everybody can use the same rules. So we've, we've done a lot of that kind of groundwork and, um, and I feel confident that I can walk out the door and it's going to be a strong team anyway. And, and they are, they're fabulous people who have embraced the challenges that I have put them forward, put to, to them. And, and I um, am, am kind of a, a pusher if, if we need to accomplish something, I'm going to kind of keep the heat on, and yet I'll be there shoulder to shoulder working with people. I never, I never want anyone to feel like I tell them do this or do that and not give them the support they need to do that because it, it shouldn't be a problem for someone to say, I want to do that, but I don't know how. And so we give you the tools to do that because that's the only way you can kind of build leaders and build the breadth of the foundation that you have. So, so that said, um, this time in my career is a good time to move because I've done that. I've been there for six years and I feel like it's a strong, strong place. And, um, and my walking out won't ripple them. And I still want to work for a few more years and another challenge is kind of good timing for me. So. This is, and this is an exciting challenge. I, I told people earlier, we in Montana look at Wyoming saying they do two-year education right. People understand two-year education here. They understand your community colleges and they love them. And in Montana, it's just a, a difficult, it's a messy system and it's difficult to understand. And so we have a Lumina grant right now to try to make sense of that system. And, and we're making great progress, uh, you know, but it's, it's not, going to ever be as clean and clear as it is here. I, I don't think it would be because of the kind of the governance and the, some of the politics. So so this is kind of an exciting thing. I, I like to go to places that I think are, are looking forward and that's why I moved to Great Falls from Helena was the, the leaders there were focused on moving forward and doing some very, very foundational change. And um, when I look at this college and see that it's the biggest one in, in Wyoming and it is obviously in a strong community with strong, strong faculty and staff, uh, you know, who wouldn't want to come here? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You've been around a little bit, talked to several folks today. What do you see as the strengths of our student services area right now? The strengths in student services, that's a, a very good question because we, we didn't get, I didn't, I had one hour with them 
And so I wasn't able to get very deep into what they do and how they do it. But by the questions that I heard people ask, I would say that a focus on students is big. They love the college. And they, they very clearly understand some of the challenges in, the, in today's world of uh, you know, financial aid difficulties and the, the um, new regulations coming down the pike and the focus on two-year education and, and how those completion ratios can work with financial aid. And so they, they seem to be focused in the right places from what I can tell. And, and you can tell that they have had uh, uneven or, or maybe a, a lot of change in leadership. And so um, one of the things that someone said today was, you know, we start a lot of really good things, but it's, they're not sustained. And then we start something else that's a really good thing, but it's not sustained. And so they're feeling um, a little battle weary, I think, from trying to get on board and go this way. And then someone says, oh, no, we're marching right. And that's, that wears on a staff. And so I, I, um, I think that it's, it's more difficult to, to know what those strengths are when people feel that way. And here I am, yet another person that may be coming in. And so it's, it's hard to, to adopt a new leader. And, and I would expect that to be a challenge and that I would need to kind of prove myself with them and, and prove that I'm, I'm committed. I think that's the, you know that's that's what I kind of came into and 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 the staff at at my college that I'm at now had not had a parade of leaders, but they had not had a leader that really understood their work and how they could be a strong partner in the academic enterprise. And so though they all knew it, they knew they were educators and they knew what they were doing that was so valuable to students. It was really hard to communicate that on campus. Um, without someone who could articulate that in all the right places. Um, I, a, a question earlier about student government uh, and, and my experience there, and I go to all student government meetings because I'm kind of a junkie with student, <laughs> student government. But part of my role there is to just listen and, and understand what's important to students right now. So that when I'm sitting there in the, the executive cabinet, I can bring that voice and, and it's the same for student services. If there's no voice there that really understands what they're doing and what their challenges are, then how, how can they progress and really work together? And, and you need both academics and student affairs to be strong, but working together and respectful of one another. And, and if we've got that, then there's nothing that can stop a school. That's a, it's a really important piece. And so I believe that strongly, and, and I work really, really hard every day to make sure that I am on the same page as my counterpart in academic affairs. We meet weekly, and we talk all the time, and I tell her anytime something big is happening in student services that she should know about, or anything we're hearing about something going on in an academic program, and she is likewise with me. And sometimes those conversations are not fun. You know, we, we all love our own divisions, and we think that they're fabulous people, and it hurts when you hear something has not happened right. But at that executive level, you have to be able to look people in the eye and have those conversations and say, okay, that's our problem as a college, and how can we fix that? So that's, that's what I've tried to um, do in my career, and, uh, and it, it works most of the time really well. But a good question because I think the, the student services, as I'm kind of hearing, you've it, there've been little hints all day of just some some difficulty, and and it's not you know it's not the people. I, I am convicted that you've got good people on staff in just about every corner of this college, and um, and but you need to have decent support too, and and it's support from all sides. So. <laughs> Were there any questions that stumped you today? Any questions that stumped me today? That one kind of did. <laughs> um, and, and because I, I don't feel like I have really gotten to know them well enough to, to say what's strong, that's a question I would have of them. Um, 
so but no other than that I, I would say that that the questions haven't stumped me they've been really good conversations though people ask great questions it's obvious here to me that people care deeply deeply about this college they care deeply about the students and uh, and that coordination is maybe the the thing that we need to add to that mix to make sure that students don't see a difference depending on who they talk to. So. Thank you very much. It's been lovely visiting with all of you. <laughs> you bet. Thank you.